Star Cactus. Once upon a time, in the lovely land of Mexico, there lived a happy couple with their two children, Rosa and Anna Marie. Here, Mama, we brought the fruits for you. Wait, oh, that one looks a bit spoiled. Hmm? Where? I don't see it. Oh, yes, it's spoiled. Good job, Anna Marie. Wow! How did you see that? I guess your sparkly eyes have powers. <laughs> Indeed, Anna Marie's eyes were special because they were unusually sparkly. Anna's eyes must really have magic in them. They sparkle like tiny diamonds. It's as if the entire galaxy with the stars is in her eyes. Mi amor, why not take the girls stargazing tomorrow? Stargazing, yes! That sounds like a good idea. Let's set out tomorrow. I'll go tell the girls. So, the next day, the four of them drove far away from the village, all the way out to the rocky plains. Better to be away from the lights, eh? We're going to see all the pretty stars! <laughs> what about you, Maria? Aren't you excited? I'm very excited, Mama! Finally, when they reached, it was already dark. Wow! So many pretty stars! Right? They're beautiful! Anna Marie gazed up intently. To her, it seemed like she could feel the tinkling stars. Marie, come here! <laughs> Wait! Oh, they look so happy. Oof. A sandstorm? Oh! The sand stopped blowing, and a lady dressed in a cloak that was as dark as night appeared. Who are you? I am a spirit of old. I watch over these deserts and have seen many people in my time. What do you want from us? Your daughter bears the sparkle of the stars in her eyes and spirit. Be warned that if ever she gazes upon the stars in her early youth, only misfortune will come her way. But do you mean she must... Stop seeing the stars? I have read the stars and their signs. If you want your daughter to live a happy life, you must never let her gaze upon the stars. Ever. Remember. Remember. The desert spirit disappeared. And after a while, the two girls came running happily. The parents sadly decided to follow the spirit's advice. When they reached home, they told Anna Marie to never set her eyes on the stars again. What? But why? We cannot tell you what will happen if you do look. Please listen to your parents. You love us, don't you? But, but, um, yes, I love you both. Okay, I'll do as you say. Uh, that's a good girl. Don't worry, there are so many other beautiful things to see. Meanwhile, on the moon, there lived the beautiful Queen Luna. She had five sons who were supposed to look after their own stars. One of the princes was Lucius, and he had the brightest and loveliest heart. The star he lived on was taken care of well, that it shone the brightest among all. Lucius, what are you doing here? Mother, look! My star shines so bright that every human will admire it all over the world. Well, it really does look beautiful, my son. Um, Lucius? <sighs> Mother, may I go and play with the humans one day? My dear, we mustn't mingle with the humans. They are different from us. And if you ever leave this space, something terrible will happen. What? I cannot tell you, but promise me you will never leave our home up here, okay? Lucius didn't want to hurt his mother and dolefully promised her. 
Now, over the years, Anna Marie grew up without ever seeing the stars. The stars were beautiful that day, but my eyes are almost the same. I'll just look up at the stars in the mirror. <laughs> That was such a silly thing to say. It's really silly to stop you from looking at the stars. It's all right, Rosa. I promised our parents, so leave it be, okay? Huh. Mama and Papa are coming home in a few days. Should we make them some soup from the Napalitos? But we don't have any. I'll go and collect some. You stay here and look after the house. And so she left for the Chihuahua Desert. She traveled far and finally reached an area where the prickly pear cactus grew in abundance. Oh, this will make a nice stew, too, if I collect a lot. Whoa! The sudden sand dune caught her by surprise. Her eyes opened and followed the trail of receding sand. <gasps> wow! The stars are so. Oh, oh no, I mustn't. But as she looked, she saw the millions and millions of sparkling stars far above the beautiful dark sky. Oh, that's one of the shiniest and most beautiful of all. Her words traveled and reached Lucius's ears. Maybe it was because of his special heart that allowed him to hear her words. He leaned over and looked towards the earth. Who's admiring my star? Ooh, who is she? He watched Anna Marie as she collected the cactus. After some time, she went to sleep. How do I get her attention? Hmm, Stardust, I'll talk to her through dreams. And so he blew some dust towards the earth and to her. Oof, where am I? Up in the stars. Hello, my name is Lucius, and I'm the Prince of the Stars. I heard you praising my star just now. It's yours? It's very beautiful. My name is Anna Marie. Lucius showed her around, and she was mesmerized by everything on the star. For you, so you'll remember me. When the sun started to rise, the dream ended, and Anna Marie woke up. He is real. Ah, Lucius. And so, after that, the days went by normally for Anna Marie, but during the nights, her bond with Lucius only grew stronger as they met each other more and more. Her parents soon noticed the change. What has happened that has made you so happy? Hesitantly, Anna Marie told them all. Her parents were horrified at this. Marie, we told you not to watch the stars. But Papa, Lucius is... Her parents didn't listen to anything she said. They left her feeling very sad. Anna, did you really meet the prince from the stars? then I think you should follow your heart. Anna Marie looked at her sister and tearing up, she left her house. Up above on Lucius's star, Queen Luna came and found him in a daze. Lucius, have you fixed your star yet? Lucius? Huh? Oh, mother, I was just thinking of Anna Maria. Oh. Who? Lucia suddenly realized what he had said. There was no going back now, and so he told his mother everything. She was horrified. Lucius, how could you? You must stop communicating with this girl, or you will both fall into deep trouble. But mother, I don't think... It isn't what you think, Lucius. It's what I know. I'm sorry, my dear but you mustn't mingle with the humans. Yes, mother, I, I'll fix up the star. Queen Luna left Prince Lucius feeling very down. He kept his word and stopped sending stardust to Anna Marie. 
Anna Marie had traveled far and had reached the Rio Grande Plains. Now I will be able to reach him well under the clear, twinkling sky. But as the nights went by, no matter how much she tried, she never met Prince Lucius in her dreams. I will wait for you, Lucius. I know you can hear me. Please, Lucius. No, I mustn't. I, I shouldn't. Anna. Oh, who? Who are you? The Sand Spirit explained all that had happened when meeting Anna Marie's parents. That isn't fair. I'll stay here until Lucius speaks to me again. The spirit saw the twinkle in Anna's eyes and knew she was firm in her decision. If you continue like this as a human, you won't live for long. I'll change you. The spirit blew some magic sand on Anna and she soon started transforming into a spiky cactus. Lucius! Lucius! Her words reached Lucius's ears and he leaned over to see what was happening. But unfortunately, he leaned over the broken part of his star and fell over. Ah! The magic of the stars and moon faded, and since he was far away, he turned into stardust and fell on Anna Marie, who was now a cactus. The magic in the silver stardust turned the cactus into a plant with purple blossoms. Finally, the two were together. Queen Luna felt her son's sudden disappearance. Lucius! Oh no! Queen Luna descended to the earth and stood near the plant. Oh my son, I knew this would happen, but I guess I couldn't stop you. And so, Queen Luna used her magic and through the stardust, sent the story of the starry-eyed Anna Marie and Star Prince Lucius throughout the world. Thus, everyone came to know about the plant known popularly as Sunitsa, or purple sage, or the ash-covered bush. Know that the plant was formed because of a vivid love and through the magic of the stars. <laughs>